All right, so this news outlet is always on alert when it comes to issues related to our justice system and whether or not courts, cops, prosecutors, and the lawmakers who oversee all of them are doing their jobs. Are they adhering to principles of true justice or are they adhering to this new kind of woke justice, which inexplicably holds that violent criminals should be allowed all sorts of latitude and, you know, public safety and the rights of victims be damned. Anyway, we follow these issues very closely because they matter. Again, it's important to people who are trying to live, work, raise families. Uh, And so we focus on these issues very closely because they impact all of us. Uh, We've got an interesting case this week. It involves uh, a sentence reduction that was granted by South Carolina Circuit Court Judge DeAndrea Benjamin. Now, a lot of folks will recall Judge Benjamin's name. She recently lost uh, an appeals court race, uh, an promotion, basically, lost out on a promotion because lawmakers uh, took a rare step and voted against her because she was excessively lenient. Now, typically, they rubber stamp these judges, and Judge Benjamin remains in her post as a circuit court judge, but she was not appointed to the appeals court, again, because lawmakers felt that she was being too lenient on violent criminals, which she was. Now, Benjamin is currently a prospect in the administration of Joe Biden as he seeks to uh, pack the liberal uh, justices, judges uh, on the federal bench. She's one of his top candidates for potentially a circuit court uh, judge here in the South Carolina district or potentially a seat on the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals up in Richmond. Now, Benjamin's going to have some questions to answer, though, involving a case back in, uh, from 2001. This case involves a 20-year-old by the name of Philip Lee, who was a student at Benedict College, who was shot and killed after a Martin Luther King rally on campus on the night of January 15, 2001. Now, one of the people involved in Lee's murder is an inmate at the South Carolina Department of Corrections by the name of Deshaun Staten. Now, Staten was convicted to a mandatory minimum sentence of 30 years for his role in Lee's murder. Now, Staten's sentence was reduced by two years by Judge Benjamin. And again, I know what you're thinking, a mandatory minimum. How exactly can she reduce that sentence? Well, there is a statute in state law that was passed in 2010, which allows judges to reduce sentences for inmates if they provide, quote, substantial assistance to the state. Now, this mirrors a federal statute, which allows federal judges to give inmates time off their sentences if they provide substantial assistance to the state. This can mean any number of things, but in the case of Deshaun Staten, it involved assistance he allegedly provided to the South Carolina Department of Corrections, particularly assistance which protected uh, correctional officers officers behind bars, uh, prevented them from being injured or killed, uh, and helped preserve the peace in state correctional institutions. Now, I think obviously that's a good thing. I think if inmates are going to provide such assistance that I can see the argument that perhaps a reward uh, is in order for them. Now, there's a problem, though. According to my sources at the Department of Corrections, there are scams that inmates pull repeatedly, habitually, according to one source, where these sort of incidents are staged so that inmates can then step in and provide the substantial assistance and get reductions in their sentence, again, based on incidents that were completely staged. So I don't know if that happened in Deshaun Staten's case. I I can't say that. Um, But I do know that the statute that is being applied uh, to his mandatory minimum sentence is in conflict. And so you've got basically two statutes that don't mesh. So which one's right? Uh, According to my sources, prosecutors I spoke with, Judge Benjamin ruled erroneously. Number one, a mandatory minimum sentence is mandatory minimum. There are no instances in which that sentence can be reduced. And in fact, the law on those mandatory minimum sentences is explicit. Now, the argument coming from the other way is that Judge Benjamin was allowed to reduce the sentence because of this substantial assistance statute. Now, This is going to be a big hot potato for the courts, folks, because, again, it's another opportunity for violent criminals to see their sentences reduced, even though they're supposed to be serving, again, mandatory minimums. So my question in the headline of this article that we published today, are mandatory minimums in South Carolina really mandatory? Folks, there's a simple solution to all this. 
a very simple solution, and it's one that I believe the state should adopt immediately. And that's to do what we do in the federal system, which is to eliminate the possibility of parole and to make these mandatory minimums just that. Mandatory minimums with no exception. In other words, if you commit a violent crime, if you were convicted of that violent crime, there is an appropriate sentence and you serve every single day of it. Now, again, I'm glad that inmates are providing help to correctional officers. We want our correctional officers to be safe. But again, that doesn't mean they should get time off of their sentences, in my view. And in this case, particularly for someone convicted of murder and sentenced to a mandatory minimum of 30 years, it does not mean he should get a day off of his sentence.